What is going on, Colts Nation? And welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Your guys, Cody and Derek, back for another episode, guys. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the Colts' first preseason game and some players that we are interested in watching, whether it be guys that are going to be starters, some guys that are maybe going to be key backups, and even some guys that are kind of fighting for the back end of the roster. We could pick a lot of guys. Heck, we could talk about this entire team, but we have kind of narrowed it down to a handful of guys that we're going to talk about here today. Um, and the way that I think we're going to do it, Derek, is we're going to start from defense, because we usually always start on the offense, kind of talk about a few guys that we are interested in seeing. And so I think the first guy that we need to talk about, talking about this defense, um, is Jojo Doman. I mean, Jojo Doman has been completely uh, killing it at camp from everything that we've heard, the undrafted rookie, you know, and he's been looking really, really good so far. It seems like every day we hear about Jojo Doman and what he's been doing and how he's potentially, you know, playing himself onto the roster. Talk to me about this undrafted free agent, Jojo Doman, and kind of what you're looking for, and what you're expecting out of him in week number one. Well, yeah, it seems like ever since the pads came on, Jojo really kind of turned it up in a whole nother level, which is great, you know, because sometimes it, it's different when the full pads come on and then you can start being more of your uh, full self and being a little more aggressive, and that seems to have really locked in with him. Uh, yeah, I really want to continue to see him be aggressive. You know, we've heard of him making some great tackles, some great plays out in coverage every once in a while. So it's great to see him, you know, getting involved in that second team unit and, you know, shining in that sort of light, right? So it's really good to see him doing what he's doing. And we need to find that one other linebacker that we feel confident in case some something drastic were to happen. You know, if EJ Speed and Zaire are the guys that are going to end up being the starters at some point for some odd reason, JoJo needs to be the next man up. And uh, it'll be great to see how he handles playing against a different opponent. Uh, will he kind of give some of the vibes of an EJ Speed of what we used to see in the preseason from a few years ago when EJ Speed was racking up 10 tackles a game during those stretches? Mm hmm. Yeah, and again, he's not going to be like competing for a starting spot, obviously, but more of that backup, you know, maybe the fifth linebacker spot is kind of what he's, you know, going to be potentially battling for. And it seems like from all what we've heard, he kind of has the inside track and he's really been shining in training camp so far. And speaking of that, another guy that's going to be kind of competing for a roster spot, more of a key backup role is Eric Johnson, who we feel like we've heard a lot about Eric Johnson in training camp. Seems like every day we hear that he's standing out, he's making a play. Um, and it's funny because a lot of us thought like Curtis Brooks was going to be that guy that was going to be, you know, every day was going to stand out. But actually, Eric Johnson, you've heard his name quite a bit more so far in training camp. What are you expecting from the rookie? Well, I mean, I've a few times that I've been at camp, he has really shined in the one on one drills going against our offensive linemen. He's done some fantastic work there. I really want to see. Eric Johnson provide that rush up the middle. You know, we've been talking about finding that complementary piece in the middle opposite to DeForest Buckner, right? In those key passing situations. And Johnson is definitely not going to be the starter, but he's going to be, you know, your main backup to Grover Stewart. At least that's what it is on the unofficial depth chart so far. You know, I want to see him continue to show that aggressive swim move and rip move that he has to break through that offensive line. You know, I want to see more of what I've seen in camp because if he does show that on an actual game time rep, I, I mean, there's no question in my mind, Eric Johnson is going to be the primary backup that they're going to go to because Eric Johnson's shown some flashes and I really hope it, it happens on Saturday. Excited to see him and kind of what he looks like in pads against a different team besides the Colts backup offensive lineman. So really excited to see what he does as well. And then I think the last guy we're going to talk about when it comes to the defense is another rookie, but a little bit more of a well-known rookie. That's Nick Cross, who right now, like you talked about with unofficial depth chart right now, Nick Cross is your starting strong safety. He's getting the nod over Rodney McLeod as, as it currently stands at strong safety. So what are you expecting? What are you looking for? What do you hope to see? from a guy like Nick Cross here, you know, in week number one. Like I said, I want to continue to see more from him of what we've seen in camp. We saw the first week, he really did a fantastic job of getting involved in the passing game and being able to convert some interceptions, you know, and we wanted to, 
I don't remember who it was uh, over the last few years, but you know, it always seems like the Colts always have that one defender that always, you know, stands out in the majority of the preseason games. And I want that person to be Nick Cross. You know, we understood why he was the number one guy at the strong safety role right now, because you're wanting to see Nick Cross get a bunch of reps and you want to see uh, what he can do against a, an opposing offense. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Nick Cross plays in coverage. I'm really looking forward to seeing if Nick Cross can be aggressive and make tackles rushing down the field. So it'll be very interesting. It, I think a lot of Colts nation is going to have their eyes on Nick Cross for this game because, you know, you've seen how athletic he is and the potential he has. Can't wait to see if that starts shining against an opponent. Absolutely. Yeah. Very excited to see Nick Cross in action. You know, if Julian Blackman plays, just seeing that tandem grow together here in week number one, really looking forward to that and seeing how they kind of complement each other in certain ways, you know? So um, guys, that'll do it for looking at the defense. Let's switch over now to the offense and, you know, we have a few more players that we want to talk about on the offensive side than the defensive side. I feel like, Derek, the defense is a little bit more established right now. You know, they have a little bit more experience where we're not necessarily looking for all, you know, these guys to improve themselves as much as with, you know, the offense. So, but talking about the offense, I think we can kind of talk about maybe a little bit more of some position groups as well. There's going to be a few individual players, but I think position groups, we can start by talking about both tackle positions, the left tackle position and the right tackle position. Now, the left tackle position, more of the starter and Matt Pryor and the backup of Bernard Ryman, and then the right tackle position right now, the backup for Braden Smith, which is right now, according to the depth chart, Ryan Vandemark. What are your thoughts on the tackle position and these three players and what you're going to be looking for with them? It will definitely be interesting to see how much time Matt Pryor plays on Saturday. Uh, Frank Reich you know, mentioned that most of the starters would you know, probably get a chance to play in the preseason game. How much and who is exempt? We don't even know yet. So who knows? Matt Pryor may not even play at all. Who knows? But it would be nice to see Matt Pryor get um, a few chances to maybe see how he does. But then again, I can also see the argument of, you know, he's going up against Yannick Ngakwe uh, in practices already. So like how much more experience does he really need in a game time setting when he's not really going to be facing anybody that's better than Ngakwe off the edge? So. You know, at the end of the day, you may not even see Matt Pryor at all. You might just end up seeing a uh, Bernard Ryman, you know, come in there and get those snaps. And you mentioned it with the right tackle position. You know, Ryan Vandemark is the main b backup behind Braden Smith right now due to Dennis Kelly uh, dealing with injuries. So, I mean, we we paid Ryan Vandemark the eighth highest undrafted free agent contract of this year. So. You know, the Colts were really high on wanting to make sure Vandemark landed with Indianapolis. So yeah, I, I'm really excited to see what he can provide. If he's out there, you know, dominating and keeping that right side clean, then who knows? Maybe it will come down to um, him being the main backup for Braden Smith at the end of the year. And maybe Dennis Kelly ends up being the primary backup for left tackle because we've heard the whole while that. Ryman still has a while to go before he's actually like ready to take on that challenge of being the left tackle. And Kelly's obviously had that experience at both. So it will be great to kind of see the backups and see who really steps up to the occasion. Yeah, very interesting for sure. I could even honestly, Derek, see a scenario where the Colts are like, I think they, I honestly feel like they brought in Dennis Kelly. You know, if a player like Vandemark or, you know, Bernard Ryman isn't quite ready, like you talked about, and he gets the opportunity and they're like, okay, like we're just going to, they're just going to take a little bit more time. One of them, you know, like Rand Vandemark, for example, is going to be on the practice squad. We'll protect him. It'll be fine, you know, until he develops into where we think he should be. But like the great, I think the great scenario for the Colts would be if both these players look ready to go or they're confident enough to even wave a guy like Dennis Kelly and they feel confident that they have. You know, there are obviously there are two starters at the tackles, but also two key backups that they feel like can step in and play good football for them. So, yeah, definitely going to be watching both these positions. Obviously, more left tackle, probably a little bit more because there are more implications there. But uh, nonetheless, it's going to be a fun uh, thing to watch on Saturday. Definitely going to be checking that out. 
also kind of talking about some positions that we want to talk about as well. Let's talk about really the tight end position. Now, we talked about uh, Andrew Ogletree, Drew Ogletree, Jelani Woods. I might throw Kylan Granson in there as well. He's not a rookie, but he is a second-year player. I mean, all three of these young tight ends, I think, bear watching because right now, Kylan Granson is your number two. And, you know, Jelani Woods right now, according to the depth chart, and again, subject to change and stuff, he's your number four. So, like, how does that pan out when it comes to the regular season? What are you looking for in this group? And kind of who do you hope kind of starts to stand out, if, if any guys? And what do they have to do in your mind to, to make you a little, a little bit maybe more confident in this tight end room? Well, I really do need to see, you know, Jelani or Drew Ogletree really separate themselves from one another. You know, we've seen Drew Ogletree take that step in training camp by making a couple big plays and being more consistent than Jelani Woods has been. You know, it's different in camp. When it gets into an actual game, you know, you're not always going to be in there just to play. It's not a seven on seven thing. So at the end of the day, it, it comes down to who has the best fundamentals, who dominates the blocking, who dominates in creating separation, who does the yards after catch, you know, who gets open, who gets in that, who follows their responsibilities correctly. You know, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the finest of details when it comes to these two specifically in Ogletree and Jelani. Like you said, I mean, Granson is number two right now and Jelani is your number four, you know, and we, we still were quite surprised by that. You know, we all kind of just assumed that, Jelani was going to come in and take that number two spot right under uh, Kylan Granson. But at the end of the day, we, I mean, Granson has, you know, really stepped up over the last week and a half and has been proven to, you know, be in that number two spot and Ogletree being at three, that'll be impressive. So it, it'll be interesting to see how they, uh, how they space out the times with this. Do you know, do, does Ogletree and Jelani, both get on the field at the same time a lot of times. You know, who gets the majority of those snaps? That's one thing I'm very interested to see. I want to see who makes the most catches in this and who is getting more job responsibility because that's going to tell a lot based on how the Colts feel about these two. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. All right, um, let's talk about kind of the last guy we want to mention here when it comes to guys we're watching. And I think we got to talk about him because he's kind of been standing out in training camp. Another undrafted rookie, Michael Young Jr. Yeah, uh, former UC graduate. I mean, same thing as Alec Pierce, right? So we've been talking about Michael Young. Michael Young having some of the best catches in camp so far. Uh, ball skills are definitely great. Uh, at the end of the day, like you said before, it comes down to who's going to step up when the game time is going around. And we've seen Michael Young do it in the one-on-ones. We've seen him catch a few in the uh, second and third team with the seven-on-sevens, but we really didn't see a lot of Michael Young do anything in 11-on-11. 11 11. So I want to see him step up and make those big plays. And that's how you can, you know, even if you don't make the roster, how you can remain on this practice squad you know, at the end of the day, we've seen, I mean, we, I think Colts Nation has a affinity with trying to think that a undrafted free agent or a low draft pick receiver that the Colts get, uh, it, and when they ball out in training camp, all of a sudden they're just going to immediately be a number three or number four on this roster. Like we had with Michael Strawn last year. I think that we everybody's kind of calmed down from that stretch and realized that that was not that was just not plausible. You know, I don't know how Michael Young will fit in with this roster. You know, we all, we all kind of assume who the top four would be, and we've seen some other guys, you know, really step in. But you know, how much does Michael Young impress the coaches on Saturday? It, that's what's going to tell us on whether or not he even has a chance to make this final 53 man roster mm -hmm. yeah absolutely it's going to be an interesting battle for the number five and potentially number six wide receiver position for sure um one position we didn't talk about Derek but I think what just bears mentioning is the running back position you know how does it shake out behind Taylor and Hines you know I, I think we all presume right now Lindsay's your RB3 but there are a lot of guys a lot of guys we've talked about this to death so how does that shake out? Who gets, you know, kind of started some of the 
earlier reps, who gets the later reps, kind of maybe tells you how that room's shaking out and how the Colts feel about these guys. Definitely bears monitoring. And then also just the kicking position. I think you have to monitor it and watch it. You know, I think both of these guys, Rodrigo Blankenship and Jake Ferretti, will, will both get opportunities to kick. So, like, I'm really excited to see who stands out from this game, you know? Mm-hmm. Does one of them struggle if they get the opportunity, or do both of them look great? I don't know yet how it's going to shake out, but those were a couple other positions I'm looking for as well. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. The running back position will be fun to see who gets more playing time in all this. I mean, like you said, there's five there's five running backs that need some uh, love in there. So how that works, I don't know, but uh, it'll be fun to watch that. And like you said, the kicking battle, uh, we've kind of been hinting of the idea of Veretti maybe potentially taking Rodrigo's spot, but just ultimately depends on who makes the kicks. And in a game time, you know, that's going to tell a lot too. You know, because it's one thing to kick in, you know, training camp and and when, you know, nobody's running towards you as much. But when you get in the live bullets, live reps, that changes things. So yeah. interested to see how that kind of pans out as well. Um, but guys, that'll kind of do it for our look on some things, some players that we are watching here in the first week when the Colts travel to Buffalo on Saturday. We are going to be doing that. Guys, like Derek mentioned in a video yesterday morning, uh, we are going to be partnering with Playback. Um, it's it's a company that's through uh, Blue Wire, which we're actually affiliated with. And it's a cool way, guys, that if you have a, a way, like a, a TV provider, a way to watch Colts games, you can join this. And it's going to actually help us as well. If you join, we're going to have some like watch parties. So you guys know how like Derek and myself sometimes will do, you know, like different like play by plays for the games and stuff like that. Um, so basically what it's going to be, and we'll have a link in the description and go check out the video. We talk about playback as well a little bit more in detail Derek does and so basically it's going to be like a watch party where you can actually watch the game and we're going to be offering live commentary in the play-by-plays as well we're obviously going to do the same thing with YouTube but we for you know copyright reasons we cannot show the game but if you're able to join us there we can watch the game together and kind of give our thoughts and our commentary as well but guys that'll do it for this let us know your thoughts on all these guys are there other positions or other players that you are watching here in week number one We're going to be trying this playback thing for week number one here of the preseason, so we hope you guys will join us for that. That'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, guys, go Colts.